My name is Matthew Cheminet. Welcome to my workshop. So today we're going to make a stamp. And for that, um, I'll be using old piece of steel, old tools that I buy at the art sale or uh, online, anywhere I can find it. Um, and, and I like to use, by example, those old drills where the, the end is square. And I, I will cut off the end with um, a hacksaw or a grinder. And what's good about these, those tools in general, only the tip is hardened, but that part is already soft. So we can already work on it uh, and make something. So old drills, old square files or triangle file, but for this one, I will use a square file. Um, I love using uh, old chisel, old uh, nail punch, any old tools I think makes wonderful stamp. So let's make a stamp. So the, the, the tip was cut off. And what I did is I just grind off um, a little bit the edge of the, the end here. I like to even, you know, sometimes make it round. So this way when I hammer, the hammer doesn't catch the edge. So I, I round around the edge first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just file off every side first to just clean it and get it nice and clean. So for that, I like to use um, a number zero file and I'll just make a notch on my bench pin here and just clean it up a little bit each side. And you see the steel is soft. So I'm gonna just make a nice facet clean on each side. That's the first step. I'm doing the fourth side here and now every side is nice and sharp. You know, you get all kind of steel. What I like to get is always a little magnet and I just clean up my bench pin like that. So now what I want to do is you want to always check that um, it still is, you know, nice and square. So you can take just a, a, a bench square and, and look it up. So now what I really want is the end of my stamp where I'm gonna put the design to be nice and straight. So for that, I need to file it nice and clean. So I like to go against my bench pin straight and go right across with my file and turn it a quarter turn and go right across. And what, what you wanna do is either way use a square, but with something with already an angle like that, it's hard to use a square. So you can just stand it on your bench pin and you'll do until you it really old, nice and straight. You see right now it doesn't. So I'm gonna keep doing until it's nice and straight. So that's good enough. And also what I will do is really make sure it's nice and square. So I'm gonna stop right here and the side are nice and sharp. That's what I want. And so we're ready to uh, make the design on it. So what I wanna do is uh, actually make a notch with the saw. It might be easier just so on each center of each side of the square. So I, I can measure this and divide it in two. I'm gonna do 2.76. Just with the saw, I'm gonna make a notch wherever it comes. And I find it's easier to go up first, so it catch. If you're off a little bit, don't worry, we can catch it back with filing in a little bit. And it really cuts like, it's very soft when the steel is soft. So I got a notch in every side in the center of it. And so now what I really, um, what I'm gonna use is those parallel file. Any file that are used for sharpening chainsaw. So I got different sizes. I really love those parallel file. So I'm gonna start with a smaller size and I'm gonna go on one of the mark in the center and start filing. And what I like to do is with the edge here, I'm, I want to do like a 15 to 20 degree angle right there. So I'll file and I'll look from the top to see if I'm centered. So I need to go a little bit this way. I'll just 
just look at it until you get centered and then you can just file in it a little bit. So I'm gonna just go like this much on it. And I'm gonna do the next one exactly the same thing. I'll look if it's quite centered. That's good. I'm gonna move to the next one. You know, you can also have a little bit of a, a, a brush or something to clear so you see better. Try to do the four almost equal and you see I have some kind of a cross already. I really like to use a piece of plasticine when I, when I um, do a stamp. So this way I can just press in it and see what it looks like if it's equal or if I need to file somewhere a little bit different. Uh, at this stage, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna change and I'm gonna get a little bit of a bigger file and go back in every one. I don't want to go too fast to a bigger file, uh, also because I like to to see what I want exactly and how it opens. But we can try again what it looks like. And so far, that's what we have. I'm gonna go a little bit of a bigger file, and this one I'm gonna be quite delicate. I don't want to go too far out, and I try to equalize the filing. So it's really centered and the distance on the outside is similar. So I'm gonna to move to the next one. And I like that look here. So I don't want to go too pointy there. Also because you'll see, um, by using it, if it's too pointy, uh, it has a tendency to actually break there. And the fun part about stamp is if I find I went too small, I can always file from the top down a little bit to get it a little bit bigger. But here I'm happy, I'm gonna just file a tiny bit here, a tiny bit here. So now we have, I'm gonna get it to a flat spot. We have this. So from the square, I just, with parallel file, file it in every side of that square. So again, what I'm gonna do now, and I'm gonna take my saw and do a notch. And again, you see, I still have my marks from earlier. So I'll do a notch everywhere. And for that, I like to use a two zero blade or a zero blade. <laughs> So I went in the center of each of the curve and did just a little nudge. For the next step, we're gonna use escapement file, which I find very useful and they really uh, do the job. You can use needle file, it just escapement file, uh, needle file, but smaller, and they really work well. So I'm gonna take a square file and you can see it's quite small, a square escapement file. I'm gonna do the corner of the square. I'm gonna go in every notch and file also with a little angle towards the center of the stamp. So one. And you see, I always like to keep an angle uh, maybe a little bit more this time, like 20, 25 degree towards the center. And I want all of them to meet right in the center. So now I go back, get them a little bit bigger. until they meet. And here we have it. 
So now we can try our stamp. I'll just press it once here. And so this is what we have. And what I love about that stamp now is if I use it a few times, I'm creating a pattern or I can create a texture. Where is that pattern? Like that. Now we need to harden the stamp and temper it. So to harden the steel, uh, well, I like to use parallel pliers to hold my stamp. Uh, this way it's easy to release and it's nice and it holds it well, I find. And to harden it, you can use any oil really, but I find one of the best is really the mineral oil. It's a little bit more expensive. You can buy it in pharmacies. And um, what I like about it is it doesn't smell when I'm using it. So I'm, I'm just going to put it in a can. And the size of the can will vary of how many stamps you're going to make at one time. Right now I have a small can. That size can, it's perfect for a uh, few stamps. But if I was to make a lot of stamps, I would need a bigger can so it doesn't get too hot. Uh, for that process, I'm using... Uh, oxygen propane uh, tank and uh, you can use acetylene tank or really anything nice flame and I'm gonna just heat up the tip of my stamp I don't need to heat up a lot of it but at least half an inch towards the tip I don't like to um, heat up the whole piece of steel could be done in an oven but what happened I find when the whole piece of steel is hot red hot and hardened then I find the stamp uh, bouncy. If it's only the tip that is hardened, the stamp then absorb a lot of the shock and it doesn't bounce. If it's all hard, the hammer has a tendency to just bounce on it. So I, I like to have um, just half an inch to the tip. So I'm gonna heat it up to quite a bright red. And what I'm looking for uh, that's the, uh, the temperature where a magnet will not stick to it anymore. But I'm not a big fan of bringing a magnet to, to that. So what I like to do is look at, at the edges of the stamp. And uh, at the right temperature, the edge starts to be blurry. It doesn't mean the steel is melting or anything. It's just a little bit of a blur. And that, to me, is the right indicator of when to put it in oil. So I'll just look at the edge and as soon as I see kind of blurry looking, uh, you see it's quite bright red, uh, a little bit blurry, I'm gonna put it in oil. And when I put it in oil, when I quench it, I'm gonna turn. And the reason I'm turning is because there is an air bubble that creates uh, at the tip uh, 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 around the stamp when it goes into the oil. So by turning, I'm breaking that air bubble. So right now I'm gonna heat it up red. It's a little bit blurry. I'm gonna go in and turn. And I'll leave it in for 30 seconds and then I can actually quench it in water and clean it up. So now that it's hardened, I rinse it off and I cleaned it a little bit. I'm gonna take a file to test it. I need to know if it's hardened. Um, if the file slide on it without catching, it is hardened. And if it catches, then it's not and we'll have to redo it again. But I don't wanna do straight on the, on the pattern. So what I do is I follow the same angle. And you see just, you hear that kind of glassy sound, so this is hardened. If it was not, it will go like that. You see, it hits away. So it is hardened, so now we can clean up the stamp. I'm gonna use uh, sandpaper uh, number one, which is, I think, 220. And uh, just to take off all the oxidation on it, so we can actually really see the next step. I'm gonna clean it as much as I can. Some people even um, have seen it where the whole piece is even poly all the way to polishing. Uh, the idea is like uh, the shiniest the steel is, the easiest it is to see the, the colors for the next step, which is the tempering. Uh, at this stage, 
the stamp is very hard, but also very brittle. So if I was to use it the way it is, it will actually probably break. So for the next step, the tampering, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little flame and not too strong, just a little flame. And I'm gonna hold my stamp still in my parallel plier like that. And I'm gonna try to catch the light on it a little bit. So there is a, a little bit, it's shiny. And then I'm gonna hold the flame like an inch at the towards the tip, right here. And then we'll wait for the color to appear. Well, I don't move it. I'm just, now I'm gonna try to catch the light again. We like it right here. And I'm gonna start to try to not move right here. And then wait for the color to just come up. And now we can see that they're actually coming on the side a little bit. And we have the brown is gonna come, it's a little bit of a yellowish brown that comes towards the tip. And now it's almost at the tip, a little bit more. And you can see the yellow there, boom, in water. It's really hard to see when the flame is on it, but you can see there is a different color. Uh, blue, purple, uh, like a straw yellow, and all the way to the tip, it's getting to the yellow color, so now it's tampered. So now that it's uh, a tamper, we're ready to actually use the stamp. So I'm gonna use this as piece of scrap silver and just make a line to see how these stamps work. I'm gonna make a little line there. And again, you know, when I stamp, what I like to do is really um, hold my stamp straight, of course, but I like to put three finger on one side, one flush with the stamp. This way it really holds it nice and straight and my little pinky in the back for to stabilize the whole thing. Yeah, just one little strike of hammer and there is the stamp. So now we can repeat on the same line. And we have our stamp pattern coming up. Now I can just go back on top right here. Well, I hope that video was helpful and if you have any question, please uh, write them down and I'll try to answer it. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.